Hello everybody, it's Tanner Fishies here, back again with a new Ninjago video here on the channel. In today's video, we're going to be talking about Volume 2 of Spinjitzu Brothers, entitled The Layer of Tanabrax. Or is it Tanabrax? Not super sure how to pronounce the name of this new character. This is, of course, the second installment in the Spinjitzu Brothers series, which is a series of novels following the events of the Ninjago TV series, and it sort of acts as a prequel to the main story that we all know and love. And because of this, these books are 100% confirmed to be canon to the main Ninjago series from the TV show. So there is some importance and some reason in reading these books right here. And like I said, this is volume two. So let's go ahead and review it. I've already read all the way through this book. What did I think about it? Well, before we go any further, I must give a quick spoiler warning. This is an official spoiler warning for everything that goes on in both volume one and volume two of Spinjitzu Brothers. I will be talking about spoilers in this video. So if you have not yet read these books, I highly recommend it. These books are insanely good, so I encourage you guys to read through both of these books and then come back and check out this review. And with all of that out of the way, let's truly get into what I thought of Volume 2 of Spinjitzu Brothers. So my first point, I really enjoyed how the characters of Wu and Garmadon are very consistent from one book to the next. This book does not take place immediately after Volume 1 left off, it takes place a fair amount of time after, and it's not one continuous story. This is the second installment in this series, but I still really like that consistency. Like I said, Wu and Garmadon were amazing in the first book. With that younger dynamic, you could tell that they are a lot like our modern day ninja. And with all of that being said, I feel like Garmadon especially gets some development right here. You could tell that Master Wu is still kind of weary about Garmadon, because of course Garmadon does have the Devourer's Venom flowing through him, but this time it's Garmadon's chance to save Master Wu. Garmadon took center stage in order to rescue Wu, and it was pretty much a reverse of what Volume 1 was, meaning that Garmadon himself got a lot more focus in this book than the first one, and of course that would mean that Master Wu got less focus. But still, that consistency is there. The characters still seem like younger versions of themselves, which is good. I've already complimented the writing in the first review that I did for this series, but I need to bring back that point again, because the author of this book genuinely seems to understand these characters, and for that, I am very thankful. In terms of new bad guys, we have a new villain named Tanabrax, or Tanabrax, not really sure how to pronounce his name like I said but he is a very scary bad guy. He's sort of like a ghost or a ghoul type character, and of course he has access to Jin technology, which is a big step up from some of the previous villains that we've seen throughout the series. This guy means business. He uses this Jin medallion to capture people and turn them into puppets, separating their soul from their body, and that's just terrifying. He keeps all of the bodies in this really dark room, and that in and of itself is quite horrifying. But of course these characters come back as puppets. We see puppets at Wu battling Garmadon, and that's pretty interesting as well. This new villain, Tanabrax, pretty much combines a whole bunch of aspects from previous Ninjago bad guys, and all of those character traits are summarized into this one character, and this one character is pretty insane. I thought he was a really cool addition to this story. Like the first volume of Spinjitzu Brothers, there are indeed some new characters introduced within this world following the release of this book. We do have a couple of those previously mentioned puppet characters, and other characters are introduced more so to support Garmadon and what he's doing, and I thought that the side characters were just alright. They really just didn't stand out to me all that much, which of course is okay, just a minor complaint from my end. In terms of the story of Volume 2, I find the storyline here to be more intriguing and more fascinating than the first volume. The first volume felt more like a trip down memory lane, for example. It felt more like the past coming back to haunt the present, which we have seen several times in the Ninjago series. This volume, though, Volume 2, is pretty much all about the present, and introduces a terrible terrifying concept and terrifying villains that allow its tone to be much different than the first book. This feels more like a horror novel, if that makes sense. It feels more scary, more suspenseful, more creepy, more sinister, more unsettling, yet still keeping that lighthearted tone that Ninjago is known for. I find the storyline here much more intriguing, and overall it was a lot of fun to read. While I do enjoy some of the characters in Volume 1, I will stand by my opinion that Volume 2 has the better story of the two books that are out right now. It's honestly the perfect Ninjago story to read around Halloween time, and I'm not sure if the release around fall of 2021 for these books was intentional because of this or just pure coincidence. If the release was planned to release around Halloween, that's pretty amazing. Overall, this book had a lot going on, and it had a lot that I thoroughly enjoyed. I loved the idea of Master Wu being turned into a puppet, that was terrifying, and him having to fight Garmadon was pretty much a reverse of Volume 1, in which Garmadon fought 
about Wu, and I also enjoyed the really cool cliffhanger towards the end of the book, where it shows that one of the puppets is still around in the modern day Ninjago series. But of course, like several things in Ninjago, there are some things that I did not really care for. For one, I could totally see some people arguing that this book is pretty much a retread of volume one, which in a way is kind of true with the whole brother versus brother aspect, only this time it's Garmadon fighting an evil possessed Master Wu, as opposed to the last book where Wu fought a possessed Garmadon. Though I do understand where the story is going with this. They're showing that even though Wu and Garmadon are brothers by blood, they do still have conflicts and even start building that bad conflict before the famous battle between brothers story that we know so well from the main Ninjago timeline. It's sort of like the buildup that truly separates these two characters, and that was pretty much just my interpretation of that complaint. I don't feel like this book is repetitive or lazy, I feel like it's totally necessary in building up the relationship between Wu and Garmadon and how that relationship eventually falls. I imagine we will be seeing more of that context in the next couple of volumes of this series. I also thought that overall the book was not as exciting or as riveting as volume one. The side characters are less interesting and the villain is kind of weaker admittedly compared to the last villain that we saw, but I really like the ideas that went into this book a lot more than volume one, and I really liked the tone a lot more too. I thought the tone in this book was very appropriate considering the context, and while the first one tells that story extremely well, this book tells it a little better. I feel like volume two admittedly has more faults, especially in regards to some of the weak writing of some of the lesser characters in this series, though I do appreciate all of the ideas a lot more in this book than volume one. If I had to decide which one I liked more, I would probably say volume one, but volume two is a very close second. In terms of a final score, I'm going to give Spinjitzu Brothers volume two, The Layer of Tanabrax, a nine out of ten. I find it to be an extremely enjoyable read, but with some lesser qualities that make the first book still seem better if you consider every single thing, though I do appreciate a lot that this book had to offer and it was a very enjoyable read. I'm very excited to see where volume three takes these characters and I hope that comes out soon because I desperately want to read more in regard to this prequel series for the Ninjago story. Thank you so much for checking out today's video you guys, that has been my thoughts on Spinjitzu Brothers volume two. Leave all your thoughts down below you guys and hopefully you enjoyed today's video, that'll pretty much wrap it up for my thoughts here today. If you enjoyed feel free to like, comment, subscribe, do all that fun stuff, and check out the links down below in the description for other forms of social media. As always, big shout out goes out to my Patreon supporters, including once again the Marvelous Jan. Thank you all so much for checking out today's video. Once again, my name is Tanner Fishies, and with that I bid you farewell. Yeah.